All right, well, let's get to our big, big, big story. Late yesterday, the United States District Court of California issued a court order insisting that Apple provide a signed image file that would allow the FBI to access the iPhone 5C belonging to the couple who killed 14 people in San Bernardino last year. Essentially, they want Apple to build a back door so they can use brute force to crack the password that's encrypting the phone uh, without the delay that they would have now. Apple CEO Tim Cook responded with a letter to customers saying they would fight the court order and called for a public discussion over the implications in this case. So let's have this discussion let's right now. It. Let's do it. <laughs> Jason, Jason Snell, let's start. What exactly are they asking of Apple? Well, basically, uh, they want a custom version of iOS that turns off a couple of features. Now, uh, Apple has said for a while now that it, it has this full disk encryption and Apple can't get at that because it doesn't have the, the decryption codes. And that's still true. However, what the government wants, what the FBI and the Justice Department want, is a special custom build of iOS that uh, turns off two security features. One of them is the... 10, uh, 10 tries and then I wipe my device feature This that you can turn on where if somebody tries to put in your, your passcode 10 times and they fail all 10, it just erases your device. They want, they want a version that turns that off. And then separately, they also want a version that lets you enter the passcode remotely from a remote device. And the idea there is they basically want to take this iPhone that one of the killers used, uh, run, run the software update with this special software that has to be signed by Apple in order to be installed as a software update turns off those features they can plug it into a device and they can brute force unlock the phone and and get access to everything on it by you know like literally if it's a four digit code on that phone they would just plug it in and go you know from zero 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 all the way up to nine 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 and find a way in and that's that's what they want to compel apple to do is actually develop that modified version of ios uh, provide them a signed image so that they can then install it on that phone and um and unlock and bypass the passcode I feel like um, a part of what I've read a lot of articles about this, by the way, we've all been reading all afternoon, uh, but I feel like a part of this that maybe is getting, I don't know if it's miss, if it's, if it's a lack of understanding of how the iPhone works under the hood or, or what it is, but a lot of people are pointing to this being, oh, well, if you let the cat out of the bag, then it's over. But the iPhone 5C like there's there's specific stuff going on underneath that means that this particular workaround would only apply to this one device. Is that true? Yeah, the 5C is uh, essentially the same model as the old iPhone 5. And if you recall your iPhone models, know your iPhone models, the <laughs> 5S introduced Touch ID. And along right. with Touch ID, it introduced this thing called the Secure Enclave, which is where your fingerprint metrics are stored. And it's got some other features, including the fact that the Secure Enclave, which is this, uh, you know, built in to the hardware, it has got a unique ID. And on, so from the 5S forward, there are three different, um, there are three different things that you need access to in order to unlock an iPhone's encryption. You need the hardware ID that's on the device, the Secure Enclave access, and you need the passcode. And uh, that would make this method impossible because the secure enclave actually has a lot of time delay stuff built into it that, you know, basically after a few attempts to get the password from the secure enclave, it slows down. It's built to automatically slow down and prevent brute force attacks. But the 5C doesn't have that. So on, on that level, this is something that only is for the 5C and before. However, when people start talking about the slippery slope or about uh, back doors or, or things that are more broad, I think what they're talking about more is real world implications of the Justice Department and the FBI forcing a, 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 a phone vendor like Apple to make modifications to provide them with a modified version of their operating system. And I think that's the big concern here is not that this is a single use, but that this opens the door for more requests, for more uses of this technology, and for other court orders to force Apple and Google and other companies to modify the software on customers' devices. And because this is kind of the first time that at least... From in my understanding, the first time that a court is saying we need you to code into your your operating system a way around this, and I, and that's why uh, they're you know they're calling on the All Writs Act of 1789 to do it. It's basically uh, this does not exist in law right now, so therefore we're using this because we need ac uh, access um, essentially to in order to access that you know the information underneath. We need you to write around that, and that doesn't exist anywhere in law. 
It seems a little outlandish, doesn't mm -hmm. it? The idea that uh, that a magistrate judge from the Central District of California could basically instruct Apple to right. begin a software project and yes. use its employees to build a custom build of software in order to unlock a single phone. I mean, I, I, the again, I hate to go down the slippery slope arguments here, but at what point is it unreasonable to ask a software uh, c a development company uh, and an organization to task its engineers with doing special work for the government in order to fulfill the needs of a single case? I, I, that seems fairly unreasonable to me, but um, and, and a huge burden on potentially on the software companies if uh, a, a judge somewhere can be convinced by the FBI and the Justice Department to launch new projects that will benefit them using Apple's developers. It seems kind of kind of far-fetched, but um, that's where we are right now. I mean, Apple is essentially saying they're going to appeal this, but there's been a court order that basically says Apple must task its developers to do this.